everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, we've got a, a new kind of unusual tank build today. And this is a brand new kit that we just got in from Amusing Hobbies. And it's a 35th scale Japanese, kind of like a prototype tank. Uh, there's different reports. The side of the box says that they never actually made any real versions of this other than a wooden mock-up. But then after I did a little preview video earlier in the week, someone said they actually did make one prototype on it. So a little bit up in the air on that, but as you can see, it was a massive Japanese tank with a 105 millimeter gun on it that was being designed towards the end of the war. And I thought, that's something totally different. We haven't done anything like that. Now it shows it in a kind of a green camouflage, but there's also some other, some cool camouflage schemes that we have inside as well. So we might do one of those. So. Amusing Hobbies, if you're not familiar with them, they're a fairly new company and they make a lot of, uh, once again, very unusual tanks, stuff that you don't find every day. Most of them are prototypes or paper pans or sometimes people call them, or 1946 type stuff, but some really interesting subjects. And they're not an abundance of parts, so it's something that you can put together relatively quick and easy. They do have individual track links. So you can put those on and get the nice sag, because especially on this one right here, looks like there's a little bit of a sag that we might be able to get on it. So very excited to start on this one. So let's get started. Okay, to start the kit off, it, you can see it's got a uh, bathtub style hull. And the first thing we need to go ahead and attach are the suspension arms. And what we're going to end up with are this type of look over here. These actually have real springs inside and the suspension actually works on both of these. And it's actually pretty quick and easy to put together. First thing you want to do is you want to get the suspension arms in the right position. Now you can see one of them, they're always facing inwards, this little, this little arm. But you don't want to actually put that arm on first, even though the instructions say so. What I found it was easier to put them on after. To assemble the springs, it's just a matter of forcing this spring by twisting it onto these pegs. And then there is a middle section that same thing it's kind of hard to see a little bit but you just twist it a little bit and you will eventually get it to pop on there okay and then once you have those suspension arms put into place you can go ahead and attach it inside the piece right in here and then basically what's going to happen is it's going to get glued into place. There are some little marking pins that'll line it up. Yeah, you want to make sure that when you glue that in, that top piece is flat right inside there. And there it goes. And you can hear it click into place. Now, what you can do is you too is you need to adjust these to be the right way. And then it's just a matter of going in there and then there's a locking pin that you don't glue in. You just will, will pressure fit right into place there and you'll have your suspension arm that works. Now what I will do is I will go ahead and assemble those off camera. And also the other thing we're going to do is you can see we've got the, uh, the wheel assemblies done up. And those are real simple to do. Just a matter of sliding the two wheels on both sides with the peg and coming back on the other side and locking those into position here. And we get all those sanded up just like this. And boom, you've got your, your wheel piece. And what that's gonna do is that is going to fit on to this portion right here. And there'll be another locking peg that goes on to that piece. So what I'm gonna do right now is we will go ahead and finish up putting these two suspension pieces on as well as all the arms. We have all the wheels ready to go. So I will come back right after that and we'll show you how these actually fit into place. Okay, we have one side of the uh, suspension all built up here. You can see each one of the individual pieces, the springs still work, and you have a little bit of play going back and forth on all these. Plus we have the drive sprocket that still rotates as well as the idler wheel. So when we go to put the tracks on, that'll make it a little bit easier for us. And once you put any pressure on, all the wheels line up nicely on it. 
Now what I'll do on this side is I'm just going to quickly just go over how the parts go together. Put a little glue on this one. And this is how the, uh, the drive sprocket and the idler boat go. They have the actual shaft that goes inside that you don't glue. And then you just glue the other piece on here. Let that lock into place. And then when it comes to the actual rest of the wheels, very simple to do. You can see that part of the suspension works, so we can just drop this into place. And then there is a locking hub that you can put on. And what I would recommend doing on this is being very, very careful with the glue and just getting the glue inside the hole, not on the flat spot here. That way when you push it on, it'll glue the piece in place, but it won't prevent the actual wheels from riding up and down. So we'll go ahead and pop all that stuff on in a few minutes. I got a little bit more sanding to do on this side. Now the nice thing next is we're gonna show you the tracks. And the tracks come on a little piece of sprue, two per piece. And you just have to cut those off real easily. But the best part of all about these tracks are they're clickable. Let me see if I can show them to you. You can see there's a little pin sticking out right down there. And it's just a matter of just like that. They click and then they work. Now, you can see a little piece right here going together. The, the pins are probably not going to hold up for, forever. So what we'll probably do is we're going to make one big long length paint the tracks the way we want them carefully so none of these come apart so we don't have to glue any and then once we get into position we will probably go ahead and glue the tracks down into a nice sag because uh, they can come apart these are pretty stiff right here but I have these two little links together here and doesn't want to stay on permanently so I don't know how well the tracks are going to hold up overall well, that one's actually not doing too bad now. But what I'll do is I'll make an entire length of 101 tracks. We'll see how it is. And uh, who knows, maybe we might get them to stay together without having to glue them. But I, my sneaky suspicion is that we are going to have to put some glue on them just to keep them together. Just like that. But it did go back together. Let me show you guys what I ended up doing. I basically took about 80% of the track, put them all together, snapped them together, brushed a thin coat of Tamiya's Extra Thin on there, and then kind of just wrapped them around the drive sprocket and the idler to come up with the general shape. We still have some flexibility because we didn't put a lot of glue in place. And then we also glued up this bottom portion of the tracks that will lay flat so we don't have to worry about any sag in that. And that's the 101 tracks. What we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the entire track do up all, all the coloring that we want on it, and then we'll be able to drape it back over once we paint the actual hull as well. So this way, it's, it's enough that we can still get it on, and I'll show you putting it on after we get it all painted up. Okay, now we're gonna take a little break from the tracks and start working on the, uh, the superstructure, the upper part of the hull, and it's gonna be super easy to put this together. It's basically one big piece makes up the, uh, the upper superstructure and you can see there's a nice texturing on the sides here then it's just a matter of going down the line and gluing in the the variation of hatches that go in here we've got one on the top like this the one on the back and then a couple ones on the uh, the sides things like that then what we're going to do is there's this piece here that we have these little ratchets and what I mean by that is like little grooves on here that you pop that into place that's going to keep the barrel really stiff and that'll get glued in side here just like that and when from the other side you'll be able to see this front portion sticking through and with that sticking through we'll be able to glue this portion of it on which will be like the uh, the mantlet for the barrel and finally we're also working on the barrel too it is uh, a one piece slide molded or actually I should say two pieces a front and back here there is quite a bit of a little bit of a gap so I put an extra amount of liquid cement on there and then pushed them really hard together and hopefully you can see that little bead of plastic that came out once that fully dries we'll be able to sand that down and the seam should completely vanish now there's one other thing I'm going to talk to you guys about in the instructions they call out to actually glue these uh, these parts of the sponson 
right into place on top of the hull. What I'm going to do is I'm going to recommend to you guys too is that rather than doing that let's go ahead and just glue them right into the superstructure and the reason we're going to do that is this way when we we can paint this up separately and we can still get the tracks on much easier if we have this top here I think it's going to be harder to get the tracks on later and I don't think it's going to matter one way or another once we put this on so I've got just a little bit of work we're going to go ahead and glue all of the hatches in get these uh, parts of the sponson on and basically after that it's pretty much going to be time for painting we'll leave the tools off for now because uh, I like to paint those separately later on but you can see it goes together pretty quick and easy and overall uh, there's a little bit of flash on a few parts here and there and a few you know injection pin marks but most of them are hidden away that you'll never see and a little bit of flash if you clean off it comes off real easily with like a little exacto knife so all in all it's uh, turning out to be a pretty nice little kit so I'm gonna get all this top glued together and we're gonna come back and show you what it looks like so here is our mostly complete model We've gone ahead, as you can see, we put some of the grab handles on, as well as the uh, the photo etch around the mufflers, put, all, of course, all the mufflers themselves on. So overall, it was a pretty quick and easy kit to put together. And as you can see, uh, next to like an X-Acto knife, which we'll put out in front here, a really large kit as well. Uh, lots of uh, decent detail in it. There was a little bit of flash here and there, but uh, nothing that we couldn't clean up. So now that we have this uh, pretty much sanded, hopefully complete, we are going to go ahead and paint it with our black shadow coat. And that'll make sure, or, or tell us, where we need to have any flaws if we need to repair anything, do a little bit more sanding. So I'm going to go ahead and put the black shadow coat on right now. Now I've gone ahead, as you can see, and we painted the entire model the NATO black to kind of check to see if we had any flaws anywhere. Uh, normally I would do the white uh, highlight coat, but because I've decided to actually do a snow camouflage on this, we won't actually need the, the white coat underneath. So right now we're spraying the entire model with Tamiya's Japanese Army Green. And I know that's an aircraft color, but we basically just needed a nice uh, nice bright green to go underneath our, uh, our whitewash that we'll be putting on it there. So we're going to go ahead and put a coat over the entire model here. And then we'll move on to the, the lower chassis, because as you can see, they're obviously still not connected together. It's just going to make putting the tracks on much, much easier. As you can see, I've started to put the tracks on, and before I did that, I've painted the, the tracks with our, uh, our normal NATO black, and then followed up by a little bit of the brown color. And then finally, even just a touch of metallic gray I put into the black too, just to give them a little tiny speck of sparkle. It's barely noticeable. But I do have to say there was quite a bit of difficulty getting the, the tracks on because they are so fragile. So what I'm going to show you is what I'm doing for the other side here. Hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier. I wanted to do more of it on camera, but it's so difficult to film because I'm having to get both hands on it. So hopefully I can do it right now. I've started to wrap this portion of the track around and we've glued that in place. But what I've done for this final stretch of track is I've taken a thick brush a, a brush actually this thick and dipped it in the liquid cement and brushed one long coat down the whole center of the track and that was about four or five minutes ago and it's starting to set up now we don't want it to get too firm but we want it to be tight enough that we can uh, keep the tracks together because they really want to just fall apart without it. A little more light on the uh, the subject here and now it's just a matter of getting the guide teeth to line up around down the center of the wheels and then very very carefully taking the upper part of track and wrapping it around the top and getting it to work right around this drive or uh, idler wheel and you just got to keep working on it and working on it working on it until it fits together. Okay, right now what I'm using is I'm using three different enamel washes. The first one being here, light rust wash. The second one being streaking rust effect, which is a darker color. And finally down to the streaking grime. And what we're going to basically do is in a random pattern, just going back and forth using the three different colors, kind of blend them all together on the track. We don't want to have any one area that is too too much red or too much rust color. We want it to kind of look like a, uh, like a nice dark red earth type. 
look to the tracks here. And we're just going to keep blending it and blending it and blending it. And using a little bit of thinner on it as well to kind of get it to soak into all the little recesses down there. So we're just going to keep going back and forth on this for a little while. And I'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's done. And we also want to get up inside underneath the tracks. Putting down a little thinner first. And then using basically the same three colors that we did on the track. Maybe a little bit heavier with the streaking grime. Getting it inside here. You can make some lines come down. It's kind of hard without getting my hand in the way here, but and we also want to go over any of the bolt heads and little pieces in there. And then once you get that done, and we also want to put some of our black panel liner inside here. That'll highlight some of the definition of the little bolts inside. And you want to just hit just the top of each one of those. Okay, now what I'm going to do is we're going to take a little uh, s &J metal powder. And you can use something like the Vallejo uh, Dark Steel or something like that. And just putting a touch on our fingertip, we're going to go lightly over the tops of all of the track pieces and just lightly blending it in and sorry guys there's no other way to get my hand out of the way because my hand is actually the tool in this thing and we just want to like I said just highlight some of these things and as you you blend it in it gets more subtle but it makes the uh, the pieces really look like they pop out and the look we're going for on this is we're not trying to do a muddy type surface because this is going to be like a snow covered one or a snow camouflage one I should say. We're making it look like it's it's kind of like a cold wet, no mud on it, but you still see some of the tarnish and or like even going through like streets, you know, inside a city type thing where you'd still see a lot of the wear and tear on the track. And if you put too much on like that, don't worry, you'll be able to blend it in just using your fingers still. Just keep working it back and forth. And you also don't want to forget to do up inside here too. Now this part is going to have to be accomplished with like a small paintbrush. And just work it back and forth. We want to work all the guide horns. And some of the track edges down here. And you can also work inside tracks inside there too so I'm gonna go over the entire track piece now and get those all worked out and I'll show you what they look like once they're done now I'm just in the process now of taking a foam sponge and with a little NATO black in it putting some chips all around the vehicle now I know we're gonna do the whitewash paint over this but in case any of the whitewash comes off we want to be able to see maybe a little bit of wear and tear if there's a streak area there that's come off. And the amount you put onto this is totally up to you. It's just you want to have a make it look like it's uh, been a little bit worn and or torn and frayed, we'll call it. <laughs> and you always want to hit areas like corners and stuff, things that, you know, if bags are being dragged off or guys are sliding off, you're going to see a little bit more wear and tear on things. You can also come up from the bottom here and it leaves nice little marks on the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up right now, get it nice and beat up, and then we can move on to the whitewash. I should also point out too, I have sprayed two coats of Tamiya's TS-80 over the entire vehicle to seal in our paint job underneath there before we put either the chipping or the uh, hairspray. And after I get all the chipping done, I'm going to put one more coat of dough coat on it to seal in our chipping so none of that comes off when we put the hairspray on it. And I'm just finishing up now the last of the chips on here. Hopefully you can see how it's starting to turn out to what we want.
Okay, I've put a uh, pretty liberal coat of women's hairspray on top, and that's why it's kind of got a shiny, shiny coat to it. And any type of hairspray will work, and that's just because it's all water soluble, so it'll all come off when we, when we put water on it. Now we're going over and spraying the entire model with white. We are leaving a couple of the edges a little bit darker, leaving some of the green showing through, and I think it'll just look good when we actually start pulling some of the white off. We kind of want it to look a little, little bit like it's been worn. Now that the white has dried, we're just using a soft paintbrush, and we're also going to use a stiff paintbrush later on too, and we're just putting some plain old water on top of here. And what we want to do is we want it to soak through the white paint and into the hairspray so it'll start to chip off. And it doesn't take too, too long. In fact, I can see it starting to work right now. And that's why we want two types of paintbrushes too is how slowly or how quickly you want it to come off. Right now I don't want too much of it coming off because the, the rougher paintbrush will really start to remove quite a bit. And now you can really see it after it soaks in for a bit. It's starting to come off. Now obviously this is going to take a little bit of time, but you want to take your time to get a really nice effect on here. I'm going to work on this for a little bit so you guys can really see it start to, start to come off. And that paint may have been a little bit thicker right there and that's why it's taking a little bit more. And there it goes. Now, if you decide in an area that you've taken off too much white paint, you can always go back over, give it a quick little spritz of hairspray in that one little area, and then another coat of white, and you should be able to uh, touch it up. And then if you want to use the stiffer brush, that's going to get you more like scratches of the paint coming off. So I am going to work on this. It's probably going to take a good half an hour to go over all of these areas and chip up the paint real, or chip up the whitewash, I should say. And I will come back and show you what it looks like once it's done. Okay, we've uh, chipped off quite a bit of our whitewash. I got it to the point that I, I was happy with it. I wanted to, like I said, make it look like it's been out in the rain and the sleet and the snow for a while and there's been stuff dragged on it. So we have that, that look that we have right here. Now I've taken it outside and I've sprayed it with a pretty decent coat of TS-80 Tamiya's Clear Flat again. And that is going to completely prevent any more of the, uh, the white from coming off. Now I'm just going to do some weathering. We're applying a thin coat of enamel thinner because we're going to use basically the same three colors that we used on the tracks starting off with a streaking grime and just running a, a bead across that weld seam going in there and down some of those weld seams and then taking our same flat brush again just start to slowly pull it down. And some of it you're going to completely remove because you don't want to have too much streaking down, but you want to have a few streaks here and there. And then blot it off on a paper towel.
And then for the top portion, something that works really good is you can put just a few little drops of it on there. And then taking your brush dipped in thinner, kind of just blot it. Should get some nice little stains across the top. And of course we can do it down here as well. Not going to go super heavy on it. We do want some of the white, but you'd imagine that a vehicle that is this worn is going to have a little bit of a uh, little dirt and grime on it. I'm also creating a few little rust streaks going down like these here. And we're just using our light rust wash. And you just want to straight as possible bring down a couple of little streaks like that Well, here we are. Here's our completed model. I did do one other little quick thing just after I got done with all the streaking grime and the, the light rust effect. And what we did with that is we took our foam brush with the original Japanese Army Green and just lightly went over some of these little areas in here to kind of bring the a little bit more of the green back to the surface. So not every bit of it was completely covered with either grime or rust or even the whitewash on it. And as we come around the corner here, you'll see it even a little bit more like in through this area and in this area. And we just did it lightly and a little bit on top of the barrel to give it a, just a little bit more scratching effect on it. Now overall, I the model was actually pretty good. I did have a little bit of of trouble getting the tracks on properly and it wasn't anything major it just took a little bit more time because they did have a little possibility of breaking every time we messed around with them but once we got them on I think they actually look pretty good uh, wasn't too too difficult probably about a grand total of about two hours total to do all of the tracks so it's something you guys can definitely uh, definitely take care of and other than that, the kit itself went together really fast. I'd say a grand total of about a day's worth of build. Not too many parts. It was just those tracks, and uh, that was it. And I really, really enjoy doing the uh, the whitewash chipped up camouflage. I haven't done one of those since the original Tiger that I did back over two years ago now so I thought it was a great time to do one and in the instructions they actually show a whitewash version of this tank so I guess it would have been used either in defense of the homeland you know in winter time or but they do show it in the instructions so didn't notice that until the very end that's why I decided to I know in the beginning I said I was going to do some kind of camouflage but uh, really liked the way this turned out so very happy with it so I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.